We interrupt our regular program schedule to bring you the following special report from ABC News. A clear day in California. Ground support, television cameras, and chase planes ready to welcome America's latest space shuttle as it returns from its new challenge in space. From Edwards Air Force Base, ABC News correspondent Lynn Scher. Well, it is a fair day and a beautiful day, and as you will see in just a few moments, it is also an extremely windy day here at Edwards Air Force Base in California, but luckily not too windy to bring home Challenger. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Lynn Scher here at Edwards Air Force Base. Challenger will be coming home for the first time in five days, and of course it will be her first time back here since it left here July 4th. Challenger at this very moment has just passed over the island of Hawaii. It's more than 50 miles high. It's traveling well over 10,000 miles an hour. The astronauts are not in voice communication at this moment because they're in a, a kind of a blackout. Uh, they re-entered the Earth's atmosphere about 10 minutes ago, and the terrible heat of re-entry created a blanket around the spacecraft that radio signals cannot easily penetrate. But we should be hearing from them within approximately eight minutes, as you can see. And in just over 20 minutes, they will be touching down right here. Lots of folks on hand to watch them. Uh, right here in the desert, of course, we will also be able to see them with the naked eye. But before that, we'll get some television pictures from some extraordinary cameras mounted by NASA on some high peaks on the northern coast of California. As I say, in about um, eight minutes, we'll get those first television pictures. And then after that, we'll see them with the naked eye, just as they pass overhead and land here. And with me here today in the desert, a gentleman who has landed all five of the shuttles so far, the Apollo 17 commander, Gene Cernan. Gene, this feels like a little windy for a landing. Lynn, don't I wish I had landed all five of those shuttles. It is a typical and beautiful day, and of course, as you said, a very windy day. The most important thing, though, is John Young has been making those practice runs with the uh, shuttle training aircraft, and he said there is no turbulence, even though the wind is very gusty. Now, that is very important to him. Gene, I wonder if you could show us some of the things that Challenger is doing right now. What is Paul White, the commander, doing with the ship well, at this moment? Well, Paul actually uh, is uh, coming now through the, uh, entering the, the, the atmosphere, and the molecules, a small amount of molecules, we have a graphic here, uh, the way the aircraft will actually, uh, the shuttle, an aircraft I call it, because that's what it will become, is going to make its turn to the final landing uh, here at Edwards. The thing that's happening right now, of course, is uh, he is entering the atmosphere, the shuttle is beginning to look more like an airplane than it is a spacecraft. And he is maneuvering the aircraft, banking left and right uh, to fly the airplane to a target point here at Edwards. He can actually control how far downrange and how far across range, north and south, he flies uh, as he lands, as he points the aircraft towards Edwards. And even though we are not in radio communication, uh, obviously he is carrying out all those maneuvers and, and they are being monitored by the onboard systems. Well, the onboard, he's, he's really uh, all by himself. Of course, four of them are all by themselves. The ground really gets no data until they come out of blackout. Uh, it'll be very shortly here. Okay, well, we are probably around seven minutes away from the end of blackout, and then after that, we are something less than 20 minutes until touchdown, and we will be here at Edwards Air Force Base to bring them in and bring you the pictures. Our coverage of Space Shuttle Challenger's landing will continue in a moment. Live coverage of America's sixth Space Shuttle landing is brought to you by M&M's Chocolate Candies. This is Lynn Scher at Edwards Air Force Base in California, where many thousands of people are standing by waiting for Challenger to return home. Uh, should be just a few more minutes, a little bit under four minutes until they exit blackout, but you should know that Mission Control has told us that a little bit of data did come in over Hawaii. All systems are good. We should be hearing from them very shortly. This morning, the crew was awakened at about uh, 6 a.m. Eastern time to the strains of the Penn State football fight song. That's called the Ode to the Lions. That's because Paul White's the commander is a 1954 graduate of Penn State. Let's hear it. Lions of Penn State are the ones that 
that's not a bad way to wake up, Gene. Uh, on come home day, uh, anyway, is a good day to wake up. Uh, and I imagine all the Penn State fans are pretty happy about that, too. <laughs> okay, uh, one other thing Paul White said when they closed the payload bay doors before they re-entered, his comment was, everything is all zipped up, obviously everything working just wonderfully. That must be good news to the folks at Mission Control in Houston who are watching their consoles, and to our science editor, Jules Bergman. Jules, how does it feel over there? Lynn, tempered elation is the mood in Mission Control. No one expected Challenger to do its job quite so well on its very first flight, but it did. Even the Tedris communications satellite, which gave Mission Control moments of worry, if not grief, uh, is now expected to be pulled out of the hat. Uh, so this flight, this first flight of the Challenger is all good. With us is Commander Michael Coates, who will be pilot on the 12th shuttle flight. Mike, what stands out to you most about this flight? Well, I think all of us here in Houston have been very impressed and, of course, very pleased with the uh, performance of the Challenger on its first flight. Uh, there's been remarkable absence of malfunctions on this flight, much as there was with the Columbia on her first flight. And uh, personally, I hope the first flight of the Discovery a year from now that I'm going to fly is uh, just as lucky as this one was. Good. Mike, uh, any anxious moments for you on this flight? Well, I think all of us were a little bit... Uh, antsy if you were during the launch uh, with all the engine problems that delayed the first launch for two and a half months uh, we were we were a little bit nervous uh, to make sure we could make it all the way to orbit and uh, we're extremely pleased when it finally got there let's go to mission control now mike uh, to see if we can hear them coming out of blackout <clears throat> Well, it'll be about uh, just under a minute, I believe, until they come out of blackout. This is always a very critical, important time. There we are, 36 seconds, the best estimate we have now. Uh, uh, this means we will not only have voice communications and data, but we do hope to get some television from that long-range camera, Lynn. There's a camera right on top of uh, Santa Inez Mountain on the coast of Northern California. That's a tall peak. NASA's got a camera up there with radar. It will lock right into the shuttle. And we will then have continuous tracking of the shuttle as uh, with that picture, live picture, as it comes in. And we will have them back here in about 13 minutes from now, and we should have them overhead in about nine minutes. Actually, we should begin to see them uh, uh, again as they uh, approach the overhead point. It is Let's a very wait. clear sky, too. We should see them as soon as they come into range. Western Test Range Stations at Vandenberg have picked up uh, Challenger. This is always great word to hear from NASA. Lynn, we've just gotten word that the Western Test Range of the Air Force is seeing the Challenger on its radar from Vandenberg Air Force Base from Mission Control. Ground track and the uh, energy, that is the velocity, descent rate, etc., for the Challenger all nominal. All nominal, that means things are good. 509 nautical miles to touchdown. Chase, Houston, stand by for Mach 12. Mach 12, that's 12 times the speed of sound, if you can imagine that. And they're still at over almost 200 feet, uh, 200,000 feet above Mark, the surface Mark of the 12. Earth. Well, we will be seeing pictures of the Space Shuttle Challenger returning to Earth for the first time in five days in just a few moments. And our coverage of the Space Shuttle Challenger will continue in a moment. This is a view of one of the chase planes out hunting around for the Challenger. The chase plane acting as kind of an escort will bring the ship in as soon as it's discovered. Challenger right now is about to cross over the California coast. It must be about two minutes away. There has been signal acquired through the Buckhorn tracking station that's in California. And uh, Lynn, uh, when she crosses over the coast, which will be, as you say, in less Challenger than two Houston, minutes. An update on the surface winds, holding fairly steady at 210 degrees at 22 knots. 22 knot headwind, four knots on the left side. Altimeter is uh, the same I gave you before. That's that's no danger, right, Gene? That kind of headwind. No, they're just confirming the winds that they had uh, told them earlier about this morning. Now they're crossing over over uh, Santa Barbara at this time, but they're still three over 3,000 miles an hour, and they're only 151 miles Charles away. Just take tack and now it gets fast. And uh, PJ, we need for you to cycle the rad controller loop one only. PJ, by the way, is the commander, Paul White. Right, we saw that. Now, TACAN means they're getting active data here now from Edwards Air Force Base. Velocity 5,800 feet per second, range 170 less than, nautical miles. Less than miles. half a minute, they will cross over the California coast. And they're still well over 100,000 feet high. 
So you can see how quickly they slow down in the atmosphere. Remember, they are still a glider. We tend to forget that sometimes well, because that, of the speed and the altitude at which it flies. I'm just laughing Delta at these people. One, They've got a little wave before three, they're going to actually see Challenger. <laughs> This is, this is, as I say, a glider without any engine. So you can Velocity see from 40 miles high to 10 miles in second. just a very short period of time across the ground. Yeah, message, disregard.